On the one hand, there's very good work that goes back to the beginnings of the modern public health movement in the 1800s that shows that social inequality is bad for health, and in some ways that's very obvious. The problem, particularly when you think about racial discrimination in health, is that there's been, at the same time, there was a whole body of work that got built up that tried to suggest that the reasons that there are racial ethnic differences in health is because different races are different biologically. Some are superior, some are inferior, and that's what you see in terms of who has better health or not. There is work on particularly psychological distress and other forms of psychological ill-being, not necessarily diagnosed psychiatric disease, but of psychological harm. Um, there is work that's been done in terms of bodily health status. The most work that's been done thus far has been on cardiovascular outcomes, increased risk of high blood pressure, possibly different kinds of cardiovascular disease. The work is still very much getting underway. Um, because, again, what you're coming up against is a very long history of work that has assumed the racial differences are biological in nature and not socially driven by exposure to adverse circumstances. You can have, at the interpersonal level, so kinds of social trauma, the, the consequences of being made upset and constantly being on the defensive and wary and having your systems ready to acknowledge maybe I will be, in some ways, treated badly because of who I am. But you can also have, because of job segregation and the ways that racial discrimination works in employment and hiring, people differentially employed in jobs that are more hazardous, whether they're physical hazards or chemical hazards. Um, there was work, for example, done in the United States that showed that, for example, among patients who had pain, those who were particularly African American were less likely to be prescribed pain, sufficient painkillers or, or also unlikely to be able to access the painkillers in their neighborhoods because of an implicit understanding that somehow they were going to be more abusive of using drugs, so they weren't being treated properly. If we have racial ethnic inequities in health, and this can apply also to other kinds of discrimination as well, that we should be looking to where social inequality is harming health as opposed to thinking that there's something innately different about these different groups, that's why they have their different health status. So it then puts the attention to what become, what are interventions, and that they cannot be solely at the individual level. This is not just about health education, it's not, because it's addressing what are the lack of resources as well as adverse exposures that people have to be able to live healthy lives. So I think that the work goes in two directions. One is a much better understanding of the basis for what gets manifested as health differences in terms of the biology and how it's socially driven. And the other side is about where then to think about prevention.